What is a healthy balance to cybersecurity paranoia in your life? Like, at what point does it become weird? I'd, I'd like to think that I have a, I have a good solid balance. Like, I'm not, I, I'm not crazy. Like, I don't go to extremes. Uh, but, but we both know that that's a dirty, dirty lie. I definitely go to the extremes on a few of these things. I mean, I'd like to think, actually, I know it's 100% my mom's fault. Like, I love her dearly, but she raised me to know that an axe murderer might be coming through my door at any sickle second, and that's why you lock the doors as a child. I mean, she was always that one who came up with, like, I'd be walking through the, the neighborhood with the kids, and she'd bring up... Hey, uh, did you hear about yesterday? There was someone who was like a child snatcher who was just grabbing kids. And you're like, what am I supposed to do with that information? But, you know, as my therapist right now, um, you would agree that there is a level of at what point it's, is, it, is it too much? And part of this in the cybersecurity space came from that fear, uncertainty, doubt selling. In ja uh, John, uh, oh goodness, Matt McAfee. McAfee, McAfee. I have messed that name up way too many times. We did an entire live stream where I said his name the entire, wrong the entire time. But what's so interesting about him is he was the one who pioneered FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and selling it. And at one point, the enterprise started believing it, and they probably weren't doing anything with security at that point, so it kind of helped sell it. But at what point, do we bring that into our own lives? Enterprises, the reason why they even care about security is not because they wanna keep their data secure, it's because it gets in the way of their profitability. Like that's the dirty secret, we can talk about that a little bit more, but if they could get away with no security, of course they're going to do that because it's an overhead. It's needed though, to satiate certain compliances. This is one of the reasons they're there. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, but most of the time, companies move their security programs towards NIST, ISO, High Trust, HIPAA, because they're either legally obligated or they can only get contracts if they are. But there's something really cool about that because one of the pieces of those compliances is data classification standards. And this comes back down to like what we do personally and what is a healthy sense, because data classification standards have restricted data, confidential data, uh, internal only data, public data, in the restricted data. So every piece of data gets thrown into one of these categories. Restricted data can ne maybe never leave the company. And if it does, it can only be in an encrypted form. It can't be like, on Google Drive or OneDrive or Azure storage blobs or anything without being encrypted. Uh, there's who, who can handle it, who can restrict it, who can edit it. Uh, it has to have digital, uh, was it, uh, digital signatures so it tra you can see where it travels throughout the network. It has uh, DRM and other protections on it, digital rights management around it so it can't just be grabbed and copied or even printed where then you have confidential data, which has a little bit more freedom to it. More people can see it than the internal only data. And then that where only people inside the company can access it or people inside the United States where it's export control. So there's different pieces of compliance or different types of data classification, which carries with it different security standards. What's so cool about this is we can pull those exact same standards into our life. Now, here's, don't, I don't wanna get too crazy with this because ultimately, no one cares about your data. Like, I know this sounds really weird and this was hard for me to get my mind around because you always felt like a bad actor was like trying to get into your data. But ultimately, it they don't care. And I'll go into this a few ways, uh, especially your photos. Gowry taught me something very, very important, which is if you're proud of something, it can't be used to blackmail you. So the best thing you can do with all your private pictures is just put them out online for anyone to see. This is this is the best strategy you can have. You don't have to worry about privacy when you just don't have it. Hold on, need coffee. Hmm. Ethiopian Yergeshev, so good. Okay, so you have these different standards and I think what you do is you start categorizing your data. And the reason why I say you're, there's certain pieces of your data that are important. 
But the, the way most ransomware works, it doesn't really care about your data. Like they don't care to get a copy of it because your data is very hard for the attacker to make profit on. Like in an enterprise, the way they evaluate security overall is what is like every system gonna be breached given enough time, money, or resources. So what they wanna do is make sure it takes so much time, so much money, or so many resources that it's not worth it. Like if it takes way too many resources to get so little profit, what's the point? Like in your personal life, your, your social security number, your credit card numbers, they're not worth a lot to an attacker. Like on average, a social security number goes for like $4 because it's very hard to make money off the social security number, whereas a World of Warcraft account goes for like 20, 30, 40 dollars. Now, less so now, but like League of Legends accounts or like a ton of other games, that data is worth something because it's easier to sell, it's easier to make money off of. But going back to data classification standards, what you want to do is you want to take your data, you want to start organizing into what is this, what is the type of protection I want to wrap around this data. And here's the problem, is the closer you get to like good security, like zero trust models, meaning like all my data is encrypted, I'm the only one who can access it. If I do a backup up to Google Drive, it's encrypted. Even if someone broke in, they can't see it. The problem is, is the more security you wrap around, the harder it is to share, the harder it is to access. So not all of your data should always be this crazy strict. Like let's take family pictures. Family pictures are important to me. I'm a photographer. I love taking pictures of my family and I wanna make sure I can share those with my gr and grandparents and things like that. So if I encrypt them at rest and then back them up, I can't just share them out easily. I wanna store them on iCloud. I wanna be able to send messages back and forth with them. I wanna share them with every single person. You're getting them, like it or not you're gonna be seeing pictures of my kids. Okay, no, I, I promise I probably won't do that, maybe at one point. But point is, like, I wanna make sure that the data encryption I do around those is gonna allow the freedom. So those don't sit in that restricted category for me. They sit in a more public category for me. Not where anyone can see them, but where it's it's internal only, it's family only. Whereas things like my, my will or my trust or legal documentation or, or things like if something happened to me, how to get into my banking systems and things like that. I want to make sure my wife has those and she has directions on how to do it. So I might put instructions within a one password vault that we both share and make sure all that data is locked and encrypted where even if it's backed up, it can't be accessed. However, other pieces of data is going to sit in a public Google Drive, which I'm going to share out with anyone. So one of the best tactics I know of taking is what you do is you start building out these classification systems within your own data and then assign what security you want to do, or do to each one. Overall, it's it, there's a really hard balance to maintain between being too paranoid and making it so you can't access your own data. Uh, the, the one story I will share is there are times just geek out, like really get into it. Like even physical security around your house, like I have way too much physical security around my house because it's such a passion. Like I have an Abloy Protect deadbolt. It has the coolest key. No, I don't think it's gonna stop someone get, from getting in my house. They're not gonna be able to pick it. Like only a handful of people know how to pick that lock. But it's not gonna stop someone kicking in my door because as my mom has taught me, the ax murderer is just a few steps away. It, it's a hard topic. It's one which is so fun to talk about. That's why me and three hacker buddies, Gulo Gowry and Gulo Gowry and Gator Bite are joining me on live stream this Saturday. Feel free to tune in. I will link it on over here once it is recorded. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I have been loving doing these videos um, more frequently. If you are, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, hack on.